when should we use central and peripheral TPN? Of, it's always preferable to give central TPN and the central axis can be via the umbilical venous catheter or the percutaneous central line. If very short term and difficult to get central axis, we may consider peripheral TPN, but usually not more than two to three days. The main risk is the high risk of extravasation injury and uh, excellent nursing care of monitoring the IV line is needed. The other important difference is that the maximum osmolarity for peripheral TPN is 900 to 1000 milliosmoles per liter. The maximum dextrose concentration is 12.5%. So this will limit the amount of uh, nutrients you can add. But we can manage with peripheral TPN for two or three days if it's very essential. Important tips with TPN. So we have to adjust the glucose infusion rate and optimize it according to the growth and the blood glucose level. In the last two days of TPN, because the volume of TPN is very low, we might need to reduce the protein and dextrose strength to allow for the low volume. The lower lipid uh, to 2.5 gram per kilo per day in cholestasis as well as if the jaundice level in the acute phase is high. Adjust the total fluid and electrolytes based on the blood results. Usually we do daily electrolytes in the initial phase, then we reduce to twice weekly and review the electrolytes on the blood gas so we can avoid sampling. The blood glucose is done 12 hourly as a minimum and once stabilized and in the initial phase you may need to do it more often. Of course uh, we try to avoid insulin as far as possible but if you need insulin you need to monitor the blood glucose more closely. The liver function should be monitored weekly and once the baby is stable on chronic TPN once in two weeks may be adequate.